Conductors. For electrons to move or flow, they must travel through some substance. This is a conductor. Conductors. Materials where electrons are loosely bound and are able to flow throughout due to free electrons. Examples include metals, impure water, and the human body. Insulators. Now the opposite. Materials where electrons are bound and don't flow easily. Examples include glass, rubber, and plastic. Here the electrons are fixed in place so are not transferred. Semiconductors. Materials in between insulators and conductors. Examples include silicon, carbon, and germanium. These are used in transistors and other electronic components. In fact, the word semiconductor is very strongly associated with this computer industry. Superconductors. A material where electrons flow without any resistance. Generally, superconductivity occurs only at very low temperatures. This is not something you would encounter in your normal, everyday life. However, magnetically levitated superfast trains are one application of superconductivity. Resistors. Resistors are used to control the amount of electric charge flowing. Shown below is the resistor symbol. Many types of resistors exist. Pictured are a few here. Note the colored bands on the resistors. This is a color code that is used to determine the resistance value of the particular resistor. Generally, you won't find numbers and letters printed on a resistor. The color code does this for you. Resistivity. An intrinsic property of a material is its resistivity, rho. Along with other factors, this is used to determine the resistance to electron flow of a particular piece of wire. Resistivity has units of ohm meters. Thus, resistivity is a measure of resistance per length of a material. However, length is not the only factor to determine resistance of a wire or a resistor. Factors of wire resistance. The resistance of a wire can depend on several things, including thickness or cross-sectional area of a wire. A very thin wire has to have all those electrons crowd through a tiny cross-sectional area. So a thin wire has a higher resistance, where a thick wire has a lower resistance. Temperature of a wire. A hot wire has more resistance, while a cool wire with very slow moving atoms has a lower resistance. And the length of a wire. A longer length of wire for electrons to travel through provides more resistance. Resistance formula. Resistance equals rho times L divided by A. Rho is the resistivity which was previously mentioned in ohm meters. L is the length of a wire in meters. A is the cross-sectional area of the wire, typically in meters squared, and R is our resistance, which is in units of ohms, which use the Greek letter omega as a symbol. This unit will be discussed more in a later tutorial. Temperature and resistance. Resistance of a wire does depend on temperature. In general, a higher temperature means a higher resistance. Imagine the atoms of a hot wire moving very rapidly. This could interfere with the conduction of electrons, thus increasing resistance. Cold atoms don't move quite so much, whereas the hot atoms move a great deal. Superconducting. In 1911, it was observed that mercury, the liquid, at 4.2 Kelvin has a resistance of zero, no electrical resistance whatsoever. Keep in mind, 4.2 Kelvin is approximately negative 269 Celsius. This state is called superconducting. 
Generally, only very cold materials are superconducting, so it isn't very practical for everyday use. Maybe in the future. This is an area of physics research.